In New York and Philadelphia, blacks own less than 20% of the cabs. Government licensing closes the door to economic opportunity. Nearly a thousand occupations in the United States exclude people who do not have licenses. Sometimes the licenses cost money. Sometimes they require the applicant to pass complicated tests that have little to do with the job. Sometimes getting a license requires a friend in the business. All those licensing laws do just one thing, keep outsiders out. Those outsiders are often members of minority groups. Uh, back during the 30s and 40s, uh, there were practices uh, that, that were rampant in the South, particularly uh, in uh, the, uh, the former slaveholding states, uh, where blacks were specifically excluded by predominantly white unions. Example, electricians unions, plumbers unions, railroad firemen unions, and at that time, uh, the, the records of history will demonstrate that uh, it was the purpose of white unions to exclude uh, blacks, uh, mi uh, minorities in general, from the workplace. Uh, in fact, there were statements specifically made in connection with uh, occupational licensing regulations that if this law is successful, it will have the effect of reducing to a minimum the involvement of blacks, or Negroes as they were called then, in the workplace. This is the Mount Zion United Methodist Church in Washington, D.C. Back in 1880, when Washington was still a segregated city, this beautiful building was built by black artisans, black plumbers, carpenters, and masons. And mind you, all working under black supervision. So are many other important public buildings in this city and in cities throughout the South. Today, that sounds remarkable. Even now, black people have a hard time breaking into the skilled construction trades. The fact is, in the late 1800s, black people were better represented in many of the skilled trades than they are today. Today, such blatant racism is illegal, and many union leaders would like to see more black workers in union jobs. But again, good intentions don't always produce good results. The effect of the government endorsing uh, collective bargaining and the closed shop concept within the union movement was that it uh, basically locked in place to a large degree for a generation or two to come uh, white domination of unions. And when you confer upon a union, in effect, monopoly rights to bargain collectively for the entire workforce, uh, they in effect can lay out the conditions, they can set the price uh, for their labor, uh, and they can control entrance uh, to that particular industry. Restrictive labor laws are just like minimum wages in some ways. In effect, they force inexperienced workers to charge more for their labor and thus keep them from competing for jobs. There are many examples, but one of the most infamous is the Davis-Bacon Act. Passed in the racist days of 1931, but still in force today. The Davis-Bacon Act is a 50-year-old law passed during the Depression, the purpose of which was to prevent employers from undercutting wages at a time when it was very much a seller's market in employment, a very high unemployment rate, and it was a worker protection act. Now, it's very much outdated today because the Davis-Bacon Act, 50 years later, has become a union protection act. The net effect of the Davis-Bacon Act today is that it favors union construction firms. Most blacks are in non-union construction firms or are independent tradesmen. Davis-Bacon excludes them from most government contracts. Was the Davis-Bacon Act of 1931. And the Davis-Bacon Act says that all workers in federally funded or federally assisted construction projects must be paid the prevailing wage. And if you look on page 6513 of the Congressional Record on March 31st, 1931, you'll, you'll see congressional testimony where congressmen will say, see that contract over there? He brings cheap colored labor up from the South, puts them in cabins, and it's labor of that sort that has to compete, that white Americans are competing against. It was all kinds of testimony in support of the Davis-Bacon Act that's, that, was, that demonstrated mm. that they wanted to keep blacks out of construction. Wow. And see, the tragedy of it is that the Davis-Bacon Act is still on the books today. And, and, and uh, another part of the tragedy is that black congressmen, they also support the Davis-Bacon Act. 
Now, they support the Davis-Bacon Act because unions want the Davis-Bacon Act. Now, the, the people who support the Davis-Bacon Act today, they just don't use the same rhetoric. They use a more enlightened rhetoric mm -hmm. in support uh, of the Davis-Bacon Act. 